Start your week smiling with your friends, Kathy Zant and Michelle Frechette. It's time to get ready for some weekly motivation with WP Motivate. Happy Thursday, Kathy. Happy Thursday. You've got a big weekend up ahead, don't you? Oh my gosh, don't remind me. <laughs> By the time everybody listens to this, it will be behind us. Um, but yeah, WordCamp Rochester is coming up. Tomorrow night is the speaker dinner and Saturday is WordCamp. And yeah, it's a lot of work. And uh, I was on uh, the social hour, Torque, uh, Torque Magazine social hour earlier this week with Tom uh, Finley and of course, Doc Pop. And we talked about how WordCamps are really kind of changing. And it's it's really true. Uh, there are only two word camps in the United States last year, Montclair and um, and U.S. And U.S. was small by design, 650 people, which doesn't feel small to a regional camp, but it's small for a flagship event. And mm -hmm. Montclair, I think they, I mean, they had a limit of how many they could fit in the space, but they maxed it. And then this year, all of the word camps feel much smaller. I think, um, I think you you would know Phoenix was smaller than it used to be pre-pandemic. Yep. Yes. Buffalo yeah. is smaller. Um, Montclair had around 100 people and they did not provide, um, they did not, were not able to provide an after party uh, because of limited budget. And right. Rochester, I did raise all the funds we needed to be able to do, you know, the after party and the speaker dinner and all that. But uh, it looks like we're going to have fewer than 70 people actually in attendance. So oh, wow. it's, yeah, it's been interesting for sure. Uh, but I'm still excited. I'm still excited about it. And I'm sorry, what were you going to say? I was going to say, is it the same venue that you had before at the college? No, it's a different venue altogether. So colleges yeah. tend to be expensive. Um, I think every time I say that to somebody in Canada, that there's an there's a rumor out there that U.S. colleges have to give so much time a year to um, charitable organizations and that kind of stuff. And that's just not true. <laughs> I worked at a university for over 20 years, colleges and universities, and they could charge whatever they want for that space. And post pandemic, those charges, the, the costs went up even more. But I was able to secure the School of the Arts, which is a public high school here in Rochester. It's what they call nice. a magnet school. So it's a school of choice. You, you have to audition to be able to go there. It's a beautiful area. There's several stages. And so we have one classroom and the, and one of the auditoriums. And so that's where, that's where Camp Rochester is going to be. And I'm, uh, you know, we, you and I were talking a little bit about gratitude beforehand. And I'm just, I'm really grateful because I've got like, I'm so excited about my keynote speaker. Um, Naisha Green is giving the keynote about community uh, on Saturday. And I'm lucky because I got to pick her up from the airport today and she's staying at my house. Actually, if you see this online and you see the, t the, the, um, the guitars behind me, that futon right below those guitars is where she's going to be staying this weekend. I hope it's comfortable, but um, super excited about that. And just, so I picked her up from the airport and tried to figure out what would be a good lunch. And I'm like, let's get Indian food. Cause I don't know about you, but I love Indian food, but it's gotta be mild. She's over there asking for hot sauce and adding more heat. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sweating just watching it. I think that I love that she could have the same meal I did, but at different levels of what I call pain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't want my oh food my to gosh. hurt me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, oh my daughter. gosh. I had Indian food a few months ago. It was mm -hmm. on my birthday. Um, we had Indian food and it, it hurt me. It was the most painful, hot, spicy. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know if they had, it was just the naan bread too. And that was oh like gosh. supposed to be the stuff that like calms everything down. It might've been like, garlic hey. naan though. They put that fresh garlic on there, man. That stuff is yeah. spicy. It but, can be. But so after that, I was like, oh, I want to show around Rochester a little bit. And so we yeah. went to Mount Hope Cemetery and um, I'll try to remember to put it in the show notes, a link to Mount Hope Cemetery in case anybody's interested. But we don't actually know how many people are buried at Mount Hope Cemetery. The cemetery dates back to, I, I want to say the mid 1800s, but it might even be older than that. If you follow me on Instagram or you follow any of my photos, um, sometimes I posted photos of graves and they're almost always from Mount Hope Cemetery. And uh, I was like, oh, do you want to see where Frederick Douglass is buried and, and Susan B. Anthony? So she was able to get out of the car and because it's a little bit of a walk. So I kind of waited and she was able to take pictures of those graves. And it got me thinking about how um, what, what a change agent is and how you can be a change agent that's not 
necessarily valued in your own timeline, or at least not valued by everybody in your own timeline. And yet hundreds of years later, over over a hundred years later, um, people are still, you know, putting flowers on your grave. And in the case of Susan B. Anthony, every year that there's (laughs) the elections in November, people take their I voted sticker and just plaster her headstone with the I voted stickers. Yeah. So before elections, now they actually put plastic over so that it's not ruining the headstone and all those I voted stickers get put on the plastic. One year, um, the year that Hillary Clinton ran against uh, Donald Trump, Before the election was even announced, people would go there and there was a two hour line just to get to her grave to put your sticker on it. So, and, and I think that she was revered in her time by a lot of people, by people who wanted to see change, but she was also lambasted, just lambasted by so many people who thought that women shouldn't have the right to vote and shouldn't have the rights that, that, um, as human beings in a lot of cases to hold property, Um, I learned recently that it was in the 70s, the 1970s, before women could actually own a bank account that didn't have a man's name on it, too. So if you were saying, yeah, you you couldn't, it was like 1974 or five or something like that, that if you were a single woman, your dad or your brother had to had to still be on your bank account, you couldn't have your own bank account. So we've come a long ways and, you know, 40, 50 years. But to be yeah. sure, you know, to, I don't think that when she when she died, certainly there were a lot of people this National Women's Organization, um, National Association of Women, now and NA, which were two different things and and kind of fought with each other over who should have the rights to represent women, because, you know, no, no group of people ever can agree on that either. But um, but and there were so many people that spoke at her funeral and, you know, a lot of men, there was only one or two women. I think Sojourner Truth was the only woman who actually spoke at her funeral. But um, but even though she was revered by people in her lifetime, she was also absolutely um, just the the butt of jokes and cartoons and all of those kinds of things. And she didn't actually live to see women have the right to vote. She died in 1904 and women got the right to vote in 1920. So she did the work, but she was not valued as much. In, in 1904, you know, 1904 when she passed as she is today and looked back on. But even so, she and I'm giving a whole little history lesson here. She and Frederick Douglass were friends. They were contemporaries. They lived here in Rochester at the same time. They agreed that uh, she was also an abolitionist. But this, of course, they were friends after um, the, the slaves were freed. They agreed that everybody should have the right to vote they disagreed on who should have the right first and so he said you know that black men should have the right to vote first she said white women should have the right to vote first um and sometimes she's called racist because of that but i think it's that she was so passionate about her own cause as was he that um yeah. they you know they were friends and they agreed to disagree on timeline proposed timeline but ultimately yeah. um you know the freed freed slaves were given citizenship first and then women were able to use the the 13th 14th and 15th amendment to argue for women having the right to vote so okay there's your history lesson for for this week you didn't listen to nobody tuned into this podcast for that but the Uh, truth is i think it's it's so it's so interesting though because as as you're talking about it it's like there's a lot of stuff that we take for granted Mm -hmm. that a lot of people had to fight really hard for right so like hundred years ago, 200 years ago, like the, the, the attitudes, the, the social mores, the mindsets of people were so different. And it really Mm -hmm. took these people to, to work really hard against the status quo of, well, that's the way we've already always done things. Like, who are Mm -hmm. you with these new ideas? Like, this is the way things are done in our, in our world. And they, they had to swim against that and they had to, to fight for, for their vision. And we now take that for granted. I know Mm -hmm. a ton of people who take the right to vote for granted. Um, A ton of people who take the right. My daughter takes uh, her little banking account for granted (laughs) and like the money that I put in it for. (laughs) It's really easy when something just seems like the status quo, you take for granted. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's always been. And, and so you, you lose kind of like that gratitude of mm-hmm. somebody had to fight for this for, yeah. for you for me yep human growth and i'm not talking physical although that is painful too but the growth of humanity only comes out of discomfort it does yeah. not come from places of comfort it comes from places of discomfort and in order for you to be a change agent you have to recognize the discomfort even if it isn't your own 
and help achieve better for everybody else. And it isn't always easy. It isn't always easy. And especially when you're in a place of privilege to say, I have a place of privilege, but I can use that privilege for others. And it's not that people necessarily don't want to, although of course there are lots of people who don't want to, but sometimes you don't even realize that you're sitting in a place of privilege and you don't realize that you can use that privilege. You can share that privilege with other people. Um, you know, I, I, we have a sticker on underrepresented in tech.com um, that says something along the lines of you're, you don't lose your flame by lighting somebody else's candle. And right. that's not new. Uh, I didn't think that up, but that's something that we are moving forward because in order to raise yourself up, raising other people up doesn't push you down. So, yeah. So I guess be a change actually, agent. Right. Well, and actually lifting other people up lifts you up because I yeah. know both of us are very committed in different ways to uplifting people in this community. You know, I mean, let's just yes. talk about, well, you're, you're underrepresented in tech, um, the jobs, uh, board stuff you do every Wednesday, um, the way you watch out for people, no matter, no matter where they are in the world, <laughs> you're, you're there and you lifting people up me, like getting active, like in, from the security standpoint, from mm -hmm. the new people coming into cadence, like all of the stuff where it's like, oh, you want, you're ready to like make your mark. Let's do it you know and just empowering these people I was talking to somebody the other night and she was doing all this stuff and I'm like you know it's really easy to do this like can I just like you don't even have to pay me let's just get not get together on zoom <laughs> and let's just do it right yeah exactly and just I I, I don't want to do it for her I want her to see how easy it is for her mm -hmm. to do it herself and you know what that does that just that elevates she'll always remember I did that everybody that you lift up with all of the work that you do, they remember. So it's like you like they, they're flame, right. Mm -hmm. But then there, there's always, and I don't know if it's just like sweet karma or whatever, but it's, you expand your influence, you expand yeah. who you are. And it's like, I'm not even looking for that. I'm just like, I get fired up when yeah. somebody who doesn't think something's possible and I can show them, yes, it is possible. Mm -hmm. And you can do this. Yes, yeah. you can. Like, it's, it's funny. It, you you make me think about like I th I've been thinking about legacy a lot and we talked about this with yeah. our our hundred year episode there about the hundred year URL whatever I I was thinking a lot about okay my dad died last year I'm not getting any younger I'm facing fifty fifth birthday next month and I'm like I really started to think about what is what does it mean to be looking at the downhill side of your life like I'm 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 close to the end now I'm not climbing up to the middle anymore I'm on the other side of middle because. I don't care how, like, I don't want to be 110 years old. I just don't, right? Like, so, <laughs> but I was thinking about, like, what is legacy and what does that mean? And I want my legacy to be that I've helped others in a way that has that ripple effect, even if the people feeling it have no idea where it started and who I am. Yeah. How many yeah. generations before you are just a line on a genealogy chart that somebody added to, you know, genealogy.com? I don't care if I'm just that line somewhere and people go, I wonder who she was and how do you pronounce that last name, right? <laughs> as, as long yeah. as the work that I have done in my lifetime continues to have an effect on future generations for the good. That's what real legacy is. Not that my name is attached to it, but that the work that I'm doing has that effect. And yes, we, of course, we remember Susan B. Anthony. She was arrested for voting. Like nobody's going to forget her name, yeah. at least not in the next couple of lifetimes for sure. But even if they did, we would, we still have the right to vote. Women still have the right to vote in this country and maybe take it away. Sometimes we're not going to get into politics here, but we have the right to vote because that ripple effect is still being felt and being seen, even if we didn't remember who she was. And to be fair, there were dozens, if not hundreds of women that worked alongside of her. And we only remember a handful of their names. Mm -hmm. All of those other women also contributed to this legacy of that ripple effect habit having happened. So it's okay if you don't remember who I am in, you know, years right. from now, as long as the work that I did had such a positive impact and I made sure that I was doing things in a positive way, that I was the change agent to help frame the future yes. for other people. Yeah, that's it. That's entirely it. I was just talking to somebody because I'm in the same boat, right? Woman in her fifties, although I look younger. That <laughs> We both do. 
<laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> but we're we're here to, you know, it's like you, you, you have many more years behind you in terms of the impact that you've had. And so like you're looking forward now and I'm like, you know, five, 10 years, I'm not doing this anymore. But I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to make these years count. Mm -hmm. And whatever I do is going to have impact. And it's not going to be you know, stuck over on an island and it's not going to be swept under the rug and it's not going to be, you know, poo-pooed. I'll, you're not happy with what I'm doing. I'll do it on my own, you know, type of thing. Um, I'm going to make it happen because it's important to me. My biggest mm -hmm. thing right now, um, you know, I did that talk for Green Geeks and it happens in the questions every time. Okay, like, you know, we have questions and I'm like, yep, this is where my, my gems come out. And you know, there's so, th these scams and these hackers are getting much more sophisticated. I'm seeing like AI voice recognition or voice replication types of technologies that are like tricking people into thinking that something's true when it's not. And I want everyone, all of us, whether you're like deep into the security world or you're just, you just want to look at Facebook on your phone, like right. whatever <laughs> it is, however you're yeah. using technology, I want everyone to feel empowered enough to spot a scam and say, no, I'm not going to mm -hmm. let this person fool me. I'm not going to let this person disempower me to give up something of value. I want everybody to face this brave new world that we're in with empowerment. And it's just like something that's just like a fire in my soul of like, I'm not going to let humanity be disempowered by the tricksters. So mm -hmm. it's like something that's I'm really insanely passionate about and I know so and I learned so much about it from you like mm -hmm. oh I guess I don't have a last pass account anymore because Kathy said I should move on to something else which I have so <laughs> all oh, of those good, things good. because I don't I we can't all follow every piece of news right that's why right. we look to spend right. we look to experts in our field to guide us in those ways and that's why I look to you as an expert in more than just security and I throw out questions at you, like, what do I do about this? And you are able to give big guidance and counsel on that. And that's a wonderful thing. Absolutely. Yeah. We've got to have each other's back. Um, yep. I think that, you know, that's where I think spirit speaks to us of like, here's where your legacy is. It might just be helping one person, helping one person get online, helping one person get a hot meal tonight. Mm -hmm. Whatever that, whatever shows up is an opportunity for you to, to give. And then that give can get as big or small as you want it to be. And then that ends up kind of becoming this legacy, right? It becomes, mm -hmm. you feel this inspiration that comes out and it's like, I think, I think the universe knows, you know, that mm -hmm. each one of us has a legacy. Each one of us has something to give and a mark to leave on this world and make the world a better place. I agree. Absolutely. So, yeah, I think legacy is important. I think being a change agent in order to create that legacy is important, but the name associated with it, yeah, who cares in the long run? Yeah. I'm not going to be here as long as the work keeps getting done. That's what's important. Yeah. So, yeah. So I guess that's all we got. Unless you got anything else to add. I think, I feel like we just dropped some real big truth bombs, some real heavy stuff. So, um, yeah, I think of, we're going deep. Will, we are going, we're going deep for sure. Well, um, we have work camp Rochester this weekend, a couple weeks down the road, work camp Atlanta. And then I think that's it for the year as far as us word camps. So, um, you know, so whoever you are, I'll see you next year, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have cadence amplify is happening yes. on October 20th. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to be in Mexico next week. So I won't be able to do this because I'll we'll be skip on a planes. We'll skip a week because this. This isn't something I can just talk to myself and pretend to be both our voices. So we'll be yeah. back in two weeks, everybody. And we'll learn about how Cabo was and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That'd be great. All right. Well, have a good week and we'll see everybody in two weeks. And in the meantime, eh, make a ripple. Make a ripple. Make a ripple. Bye. Bye. This has been WP Motivate with Kathy Zant and Michelle Frechette. To learn more or to sponsor us, go to WPMotivate.com.